on this week's show, Koch Brothers for Tesla Motors, the BMW i3 with a periscope on it, and the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid finally gets a US launch date. These stories and more coming up next on 10. 10 is brought to you by freeconference.co.uk, bringing you the latest in transportation news with a feature of low-cost conference calls. Make conference calls anywhere in the world for just the cost of one local call. Visit www.freeconference.co.uk today to find out more. It's Friday, February 20th, 2015. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. I'm flying to Oslo, so let's get on with the show. You might not know this, but under current US federal legislation, there's a little known quota worked into the federal tax credit for plug-in vehicles. Only an automaker's first 200,000 plug-in cars sold in the US are eligible for the full incentive. After that point is reached, anyone buying a plug-in car will find they're no longer eligible for the full federal tax credit. It's essentially the price an automaker pays for producing a really popular plug-in car. But this week, Nissan, maker of the world's best-selling Leaf electric car, says it's not worried about the day when it passes a 200,000 plug-in vehicle mark in the US. Talking with Wards, Nissan's Pierre Luang said that while Nissan views the cap as little more than a penalty for producing a popular plug-in, it's ready and able to cope with a day when the federal tax credits no longer apply, thanks to reduced battery costs and presumably the economies of scale. Will it manage to reduce that price by an amount equivalent to the current $7,500 tax incentive? Only time will tell. You've seen the hours of Tesla rationing videos on YouTube, Vimeo, Tumblr, and Instagram. You've heard from the breathless soundbite reviews from Tesla fans and owners alike, proclaiming the Tesla Model S P85D electric sedan to be the best car they've ever ridden in. And if you're like us and can't afford one for yourself, there's now a way to get your very own Tesla Model S P85D, complete with a chauffeur, for just a few hundred dollars. Enter the recently launched super hip Virgin Hotel in Chicago, the first of Sir Richard Branson's forays into the hotel business, as well as offering the kind of things that most hotels don't, like smartphone connectivity to your room and transparent billing, the hotel now has its own chauffeur-driven Tesla Model S P85D in red to provide concierge travel to and from several key places throughout the Windy City. All you have to do is book one of the hotel's $209 a night rooms to get the treat. So if you're looking somewhere to stay in Chicago, you've now got a new destination to try out. Believe it or not, but we're nearly three quarters of the way through February, which means we're getting close to another Geneva Motor Show. And that means we're in for another weird and wonderful never reach production concept car from those crazy folks at Rinspeed. Following on from last year's Tesla base exchange concept car comes the Rinspeed Buddy, a self-driving tech field concept car based on the BMW i3 electric car. Like last year's concept, the Buddy features autonomous drive software and plenty of in-car tech, but it also features a collapsible steering column made out of a seven-axis robotic arm, two tiny Segway-like vehicles for last-mile travel, and the ability to transfer control between the driver and passenger at the touch of a button. And then there's this weird Cyclops-like periscope which extends from the roof of the car to help it see down the road more clearly which, like the rest of the car, is based on actual technology in development today. But Cyclops stalks? Um, okay. After months of silence on the subject, Mitsubishi North America has finally set an official US launch date for the upcoming second-generation Outlander plug-in hybrid SUV of April next year. But even though the first-generation Outlander plug-in has experienced massive sales in Europe and Japan, Mitsubishi North America says it expects less than 4,000 2017 Outlander plug-ins to sell in the first year of US sales. Based on the new 2016 gasoline Outlander we'll see later this year, the plug-in variant will offer a more luxurious finish than the current generation model, but likely retain the 30 miles all-electric range, 2.0 litre gasoline engine and Chadamo DC quick charge capabilities of its predecessor. So if you've been waiting for this car to cross the Atlantic or the Pacific, your wait is almost over. Multi-billionaire brothers David and Charles Koch might be the last people you'd expect to be supportive of the ultra-modern, environmentally friendly Tesla Motors, especially given their past support of the climate change denier movement and anti-environmental policy attitudes. But this week, hell literally froze over, because it seems that the Koch brothers are willing to put free market principles above everything else. 
Enter a letter sent to lawmakers on Capitol Hill this week, pleading with them to fight legislation across the US, which prevents Tesla Motors from selling direct to customers and promoting instead a free and open market where Tesla and other automakers can circumvent franchise dealers altogether. It's signed by 10 different special interest groups, including the Sierra Club and, wait for it, Coke-funded Americans for Prosperity, an organization which has a history of caring little about fluffy bunnies and the air we breathe, but strange things happen in politics indeed. Only 2,600 Tesla Roadster two-seat electric sports cars were ever made, yet some seven years after they started to roll off the production line and three years after they ended production, Tesla Motors is still happily supporting the car that helped change the world's view of plug-in vehicles. And now it seems the new Tesla 3.0 upgrade package, unveiled by Tesla CEO Elon Musk last year, has what it takes to catapult the roadster back into the spotlight after the automaker carried out a real-world test to see how much the upgraded 70 kWh lithium-ion battery pack, new tyres and improved aerodynamics of the upgrade package would improve range in the real world. A lot, it turns out, with a prototype Tesla 3.0 car travelling at or around the legal limit all the way from San Francisco to Los Angeles without needing a recharge, a distance Tesla said was around 340 miles, with 20 miles of range remaining at the end of the trip. The prices and launch dates haven't yet been set, but we're guessing those who can afford the upgrade will want it to keep their modern classic at the forefront of automotive technology a little while longer. The world's longest-running production highway-capable electric car, the Mitsubishi Inev, officially starts 2016 model year sales deliveries next month. But while the tiny egg-shaped car, which has been in production in Japan since 2009, on sale in Europe since 2010, and in the US since 2011, might be the longest-running production electric car of today, it's also one of the lowest-selling, managing less than 2,000 total sales in the US in three years. And as other automakers are readying their second-generation plug-in cars to market, Mitsubishi's 2016 Imiev is likely to be identical to its predecessors, with the same 16 kWh lithium-ion battery pack, 62-mile EPA-approved range, and forsake capability. Mitsubishi hasn't released official specs yet, but expect this low-selling car to perhaps get a few tweaks here and there to mark the new model year, and we hope another price cut, bringing electric mobility in reach of even more car buyers. It's official. After months of planning and long consultations, the final two races of the inaugural Formula E race series are set to take place this year in Battersea Park, London. Announced on Thursday morning, the final two races of the season will take place over the weekend of June 27 and 28 this summer and will help secure the final places on the podium for the overall championship. Like previous races, the race circuit will be formed from public roads in the city centre, which will be temporarily closed for the event. Unlike previous events, however, the entire race will take place within a park, making for what we hope will be some really spectacular photographic opportunities for fans and press alike. Alongside the full-size Formula E races, there's also going to be some action from the Green Power FE School Series, which will pit 10 local schools against each other on the track in hand-built electric kit cars. If you're in London or visiting it this June, be sure to mark those dates in your diary, because it's going to be fun. And finally, here's the latest rumour from Jaguar Land Rover, which suggests that the UK prestige firm is finally readying an all-electric plug-in car for market in the near future. The rumour, courtesy of British magazine Autocar, suggests that increasingly tough emissions regulations, combined with the competition placed on it by the Tesla Motors Model S, means that Jaguar is only a year or so away from bringing a 300-mile plug-in SUV to market. Of course, this isn't the first time we've seen a plug-in from Jaguar or Land Rover. So far, the group has shown the sexy CX-75 plug-in turbine hybrid supercar, the Range E plug-in hybrid, the XJE plug-in hybrid and Land Rover electric Defender. So far, though, not a single one has made it to production. So watch this space. There could be a big cat with a plug coming sooner than you think. 
That's all there is this week. You can catch us next time at the same time for another weekly news roundup. Visit our site every day at transportevolve.com for the latest news. And while there won't be a live show this week, I'm driving a Tesla Model S from Oslo to London, there's plenty of stuff to watch at www.youtube.com forward slash transportevolved. As usual, there's been a whole lot we haven't managed to fit into today's show, including myth busting some claims on electric car charging in Scotland, the 370th birthday of the inventor of the modern day battery, some thought to Apple's rumoured self-driving car, and why BMW can't beat the Model S with an 18-mile plug-in hybrid. So when we're done, click on this link and head to our site to catch up. And don't forget to visit our show sponsors at www.freeconference.co.uk. It doesn't matter if you're making work, conference calls to New York, or family calls to New Zealand. Free Conference lets you make and join telephone conference calls anywhere in the world for just the cost of a local call. To sign up and get calling today, visit freeconference.co.uk to set up your first free call. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have a great weekend, and until next time, keep evolving. Thank you.